important to say the similar woman from Bakersfield. Uh, Shannon Grove is a real hero. I, I tell my good friend Jim Patterson, the son of the Patterson, that I often say, what does it mean to be a Republican in Sacramento? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> she is there facing the, uh, the odds of being that minority party, standing for uh, constitutional rights, standing for uh, what is right, and doing such a wonderful job in that. We are so honored to have her here tonight to come and speak to us to, to begin our night. Will you welcome with me Southern woman Shannon Grove from Bakersfield? <laughs> So, Shannon, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, what a pleasure to be in this beautiful building. It's just absolutely stunning. So, thank you for the invitation to be here. I'm Assemblywoman Shannon Grove, and I represent the 34th Assembly District. And the scripture that came to mind when I was coming on stage is that God uses the foolish to confound the wise, because as the worldview standards would have it. There's no way I belong in the California State Legislature. I don't have a college degree. My mom was a single mom. I worked at a car hop when I was 16. I joined the United States military. I came home and started a business. Um, but as far as being involved in politics, I've never, ever been involved in politics before. But I got a phone call about running for office, and I decided to do it. We prayed it. We prayed and fasted over it for 21 days. And then we decided to do this, and uh, we ran, we won by 78% of the vote against someone uh, that had been in politics for 20 or 15 to 18 years, and that's just totally the Lord. So I get up to the state capitol, and I'm thinking, okay, you know, this is what we'll do. We'll tell them that when they pass laws that affect our families, um, it's not good for us as citizens. When they pass laws that destroy our jobs and economic security, that's not good for us as citizens. And they'll understand because, you know, I did research on them. Most of them had never been in um, the private sector or much less signed in front of a check. So I get up there and I find out that they just don't care. Um, there are a group of individuals that control our state capital that just don't care. And I'm going to share a little bit more of the stuff that I didn't share this afternoon and um, because it's a different audience. And some of you heard me this afternoon, and I won't repeat myself, but I want you to think about something. <clears throat> um, Tonight we're going to talk to you about the pews, meaning everybody that sits in these pews and the pastors. It's time for pastors to engage the people that they serve and that they lead. And then it's your responsibility to follow your pastor's leadership and engage in the political and the civic arena. And it's so important that you do that. This is why. We're called to be salt and light to the world. And that's so significant and so, so important. I can tell you that as a believer and somebody who stands on truth, I have legislators that say, I'm pro-life, I'm pro-life. I'm the only legislator that introduced two pro-life legislation bills. Now, they both died, but it created a firestorm of media to discuss the real war on women when you talk about gender selection. Like, people from other countries are coming to the state of California to have abortions just because they're females. And we pay for that as taxpayers. So I want to share these things with you because I want you to be awakened. You guys are here because you want to hear more about what's going on. And I want you to be awakened about what's going on in the state capitol. And I want you to know the things that are going on in the state capitol so that you can do something about it. So I challenge you to get involved. I have been able to speak at a lot of churches. Um, God has opened doors for me to be at many churches. And I think the pivotal turning point at me speaking at churches, when I was speaking at a group down in San Diego, I prayed for days. Father, God, give me a word. Let me know what I'm supposed to talk about. And I got nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. And then right when I was getting ready to walk up, the pastor brought me up. And then he brought a group of people across the sanctuary. There were three, sometimes four deep in the sanctuary. And he goes, Miss Rowe, these people have been praying for this state for 20 years. And the word of the Lord hit my heart. And I thought, wow, Father God, that's pretty harsh. Um, how about I not say that? And it was so convicting that I said it. I said, I appreciate your prayers. I do. I appreciate your prayers. I'm a prayer. I, I believe in prayer. I believe in worshiping the Lord, an almighty God that meets every one of our needs. But I want to ask you, have any of you ever put your name on a ballot? And not one of those people raised their hands. And I said, so I appreciate your prayers. I believe in your prayers. I know the Lord works masterfully when we pray to him. But if we don't put feet to those prayers, it's dead. It's nothing. Faith without works is dead. 
And I see, I said that to them, and I said, I appreciate your prayers, but since you've been praying for the, the state of California the last 20 years, we've gone from a red state to a blue state. We've become the number one abortion provider in the nation. We've saddled our children with an immoral debt. That's what's happened. Because not one of you has put your name on the ballot and been salt and light to this world and salt and light to this state. And if you think about it, I want you to imagine this state if we sprinkled a little salt in our school boards, in our city councils, in our county supervisors, in our state assembly, our state senate, could you imagine if the governor, imagine the governor of the state of California being Pastor Jim? Just think about that. What, 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 kind of gov what kind of state do you think that we would have if we were under the leadership of someone like Pastor Rafael Cruz. I'm not saying they're running for governor. I don't, I don't mean that by any means. I'm just telling you that if we, as the church and the body of Christ, do not actively get in, involved in the civic arena, then we are going to continue to go down this immoral, irreparable road. And it's going to continue to decline. It is our responsibility to make sure that we are actively and engaged in the civic arena. Actively and engaged in the civic arena. That means that you pray about it. And if the Lord leads you to put your name on the ballot, then you run. And you put your name on the ballot. If the Lord leads you to work on campaigns, then you work on campaigns. If the Lord leads you to actively get involved in legislation to stop or support legislation, then get actively involved in legislation. If your pastor calls you to register to vote, register to vote. I know Pastor Cruz will talk about this on a national level. Um, 85, you know, 85 million uh, Americans identify themselves with Christ and nationally. And only 50% of them vote. 50%, or excuse me, 50% of, of them are registered to vote. 50% of those actually vote. And of the 50% of the left, 50% of those vote in a non-presidential election year. Take the state of California. The last gubernatorial race where the governor went, won hands down, and Obama carried the state hugely, hugely with their policies. How many, just, and I'm not trying to embarrass you, but just have a show of hands, how many people agree with the president's policies? No one in this room. Okay, so I'm just sharing this with you. Even the state of California, there were 7.1 million votes cast in the gubernatorial election. There are 7.9 million of us. So if there are 7.9 million of us, how does someone who doesn't believe in our, our biblical principles and our values become the governor of the state of California? If there are 7.9 million of us, it's because we're not putting feet to our actions. We're not putting actions to our faith. We get on our hands and knees in the front row. We say, Father God, please don't let it be Jerry Brown. And, but then we don't vote. Don't vote. I want you to know that there are things going on in the state capitol. Transparency is nothing in the state capitol. There are a set of house rules and these rules, and I'm going to go through them really fast because I only have a few minutes left, but there's these house rules. The house is governed by a set of rules, but there are so many people from the majority party, they can suspend the rules, violate the rules, and then reinstate the rules. Okay? Meaning a bill has to be in print for 30 days. But the water bill that came in, the groundwater policy that's affecting all of our farmers and growers from accessing water, that bill, the language, um, hasn't been in print for three days. There hasn't been a vetting process. Uh, stakeholders haven't been able to participate on the legislation. And what do they do? It's a violation of the rules of the House to bring this bill forward because it hasn't been seen or in print for 30 days. They vote to suspend the rules. They introduce the legislation in mock-up form. And then they vote on the bill, it gets out, goes to the governor's desk, and then they reinstate the rules. They do things like that in the end. I was sharing with a pastor's wife that there's a vote paint bill, and they did all this research to show how the, the light vote paint in the boat, uh, in the water hurts the fish's eyes, and has marine biology and things, and all this ridiculous stuff. And so that bill goes through the building, it gets its vetting process, and it ends up on the originating house floor, getting ready to go to the governor's desk, and all of a sudden the bill comes up and you're like, oh, that's the vote paint bill. And the author stands up and says, this will allow physicians assistance to perform abortions on uh, young girls and, or girls that are 12 years old, give them freedom to access a choice, okay? And you're like, wow, that was a vote paint bill. 
They deleted all the language out of the vote paid bill, and they inserted the language out of the abortion bill that failed in committee, but now that bill is on its way to the governor's desk and it's signed. Because they violate the rules. So I'm telling you that until we get godly, upstanding people making decisions about your life and my life, and that's only going to happen when you guys act. Politicians, politicians are actors performing on a stage with a script written by the audience. And right now, the gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual questioning and the environmentalist and the unions are writing the script for politicians up in Sacramento. And I submit to you that it has to stop with them and you have to become engaged in the civic arena to write the script. Write the script. Write the script. Register to vote. Cast your vote for people that have aligned with your values. And if they change their values once they get to that building, you pick up the phone and you hold them accountable. You hold them accountable in the public arena. Because those environmentalist people do. When Hobby Lobby won that case, I had a question this afternoon and they said, them, yeah, but we do this and we fight and then we, we, you know, a judge overturns us and we lose and we, and we, one person overturns us. That was a question to me. What do we do about the people who are giving up? When Hobby Lobby won that case, did the people on the other side of the aisle give up? They didn't. They felt lawsuits over hundreds of employers because they know those hundreds of employers aren't going to take it to the Supreme Court like Hobby Lobby did. And then precedents will be set. You can never stop putting a flag in the ground every morning for the Lord Jesus and claiming victory for this state because this land belongs to him. And I'm telling you, and I submit to you, that the Philistines, and I'm not talking about immigration, I'm talking about people that are occupying our government and our land, they have been in power way too long. And it's time for a David to stand up and throw a stone and say, get out. Because God will people in And it doesn't matter what people say. I don't, you know, people go, how do you talk like that? Even leadership on the Republican side. You know, why do you have to talk like that? Why do you have to do that? Well, you know, I perform for an audience of one every day. I do what the Lord wants me to do, and then I call my husband and go, I'm right. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I have an amazing husband that supports everything that I do. So I challenge you, please get involved. And you guys have great representation here with Jim Patterson. You do. He's an ally up there that I need and rely on. But if you have connections in other part of the state, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara, I was sharing, I go to a Bible study with another legislator who knows the Bible probably better than anybody in this room, inside and out. And he votes for every abortion and every pro-gay marriage bill that comes on the ballot. Even introduces legislation. Call his pastor. I have a lady that sits on the deacon board of a church at North by Sacramento. She sits on the deacon board of a church, and she's a legislator. And she supports every abortion bill and every gay marriage bill that comes through that building. It's because they don't want to pick that fight. They don't, they don't want to pick that fight. If we don't pick that fight and we're silent on those issues, I shared earlier today, if you have a candidate and that candidate will defend your life whether you're in the womb or you're 90 and on your deathbed or 100 and on your deathbed, any, anything in between, if you have a candidate or a legislative representative that will defend your life, I guarantee you they will protect your property, your rights, and your freedom. If you have a legislator that says, I can't debate the life issue, don't you dare think they're going to protect your property. Because your life is the most valuable thing that you can So I, um, I'm going to close with this and tell you a story. I had the privilege of I'm telling you that God is moving in this state. God really is moving. He's moving. You can feel it. You can see it. Um, it's evident that things are happening and he is moving in our state and in our nation. And I had the opportunity to be able to um, share the stage with a wonderful, wonderful individual. And I was speaking, I was supposed to be the keynote speaker and they called me and said, hey, do you mind sharing the stage? And I said, oh, no, not at all. They said, yeah, Pastor Cruz is coming to town. And I said, oh, absolutely. And about that time, the only thing I knew about Pastor Cruz is that he was Senator Ted Cruz as a father. So he gets up, I speak on stage, and then he gets up on stage, and he says, Ms. Grover, please confirm to this audience that we never even talked, we didn't compare notes, we didn't um, put our thoughts together, and this is the first time that I've met you, if that's true. And I said, absolutely, sir. I, I just shook your hand from two seconds ago. Our messages were the same. Activating, different delivery, but the messages are the same. Activating the church. 
activating everybody that calls himself a believer in Christ to stand up and do their civic duty and cast a vote for someone who aligns with your biblical principles. The message is the same, and that has to be God ordaining that message. And we go across the nation with the American Renewal Project. We were just in New Hampshire, and there are, they are activating pastors. And you have pastors standing up going, I'm going to do this. I get emails after the fact where pastors are like, I had a stand-up Sunday, and I registered 400 people in my church. And I'm going to hold a class and tell them what candidates or how they vote and show the voting record of each candidate. That is going to change America. Because the church has been inside the two walls, inside the four walls of their church, praising and worshiping the Lord, which is all well and good, but the world's been going mad, and it's about time we sprinkle a little salt out there. God bless you.